to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Friday, October 12th, 2012. I'm Kristen Valetti. An injunction that forbade the sales of the Samsung Galaxy Nexus in the United States has been overturned by the U.S. Court of Appeals. Also, Samsung has lost one of its top chip designers to Apple iOS 6. To Apple and Apple iOS 6 is tracking you. Joining us now to discuss these headlines is SiliconANGLE contributing editor John Casaretto. Welcome, John. Good morning. In late June, uh, following a lawsuit filed by Apple earlier this year, a California court granted an injunction against Samsung that banned the sale of the Galaxy Nexus in the U.S., which was overturned yesterday. Uh, we'll, we're well aware that these two companies have been undergoing major legal battles over patents for several months. How big of a victory is this for Samsung? Uh, it's a big victory. I, um, Samsung got... Um, that injunction back in back in uh, over the summer, and uh, this is a um, a big ruling, and uh, it's 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 significant in that they're now going to be able to return to selling the Galaxy Nexus. What was the court's reasoning for removing the junction? Well, <clears throat> basically, they were able to uh, focus in on the the functionality of the product as a whole. So they were able to say um, there is no one feature that makes a person buy a certain phone, a certain device. Was there a specific hardware or a software feature on the Galaxy Nexus that the lawsuit was focused on? Yeah, in this case it was a uh, search. So um, the uh, gist of what was essentially um, said was that um, the search function um, on its own it was not enough to, to really justify to say that People are buying these phones because of search functionality, and therefore that was the uh, reasoning uh, for overturning this. So how soon can Samsung return to selling the Galaxy Nexus? Well, it would appear as though that would be right away. Uh, we'll probably hear something from Samsung sometime today or the next few days, but uh, it, it would probably be instant. Do you think Apple will continue to pursue this particular lawsuit or attempt to take any further action regarding it? I believe so. I believe that they will continue to uh, pursue this. Um, it's, uh, you know, they need to make it hard, you know. So um, I think that uh, the, they, they have more in store, and uh, this, this will continue back and forth between Samsung and Apple as they, you know, have this fight in the courts around the world. In other Samsung news, Samsung recently went on a hiring spree of chip designers, and now one of the most prominent of those recruits has left the company for Apple. Uh, prior to working at Samsung, Jim Murgard was previously vice president and chief engineer, along with being a 16-year veteran at AMD. So why is Murgard now moving on to Apple, and do you think others will follow? You know, it's a good question. He's a, obviously a veteran and somebody that has a lot of uh, credentials. Um, Apple and uh, Samsung, you know, it's a little bit of uh, if you can't beat them, join them. Uh, in this case, it's, you know, can't necessarily beat them, but maybe you can join us. So I think other people will start to look at Apple as a potential employer, um, perhaps people from Murgard's team. Um, it all has to do with the fact that, you know, there's a, an alignment with uh, ARM technology and the chip development in that space. Uh, which is obviously integrated into Apple's products, um, their iPads, or iPhones, etc. What kinds of qualifications and experience does Murgard have that can help Apple? Well, um, his particular experience is uh, what's known in a, in a type of uh, chip known as a SOX, which is a systems on a chip. So basically what they're able to do is, is create a very low power type of uh, chip, uh, which is efficient on batteries, uh, which is um, basically he's got a lot of a um, lot of components packed into it. So special kinds of like circuitry all packed into a single um, one single piece of silicon chip. So that's his specialty. It's a very it's a very advanced um, type of uh, technology and and what makes these these um, devices so powerful. Where do you see Apple applying Mirgard's talents? Um, well, they're definitely continuing to look for the uh, brightest people out there. Um, I think that they're going to look to advance their, their Macs. They're going to continue to miniaturize, um, continue to advance their, uh, you know, the phone sets um, and advance the uh, tabs and things like that. Um, 
Samsung uh, was rumored to be looking at moving into the server space, being that the ARM technologies are um, pretty prevalent there, and there's a, a big movement towards uh, moving to that type of architecture. Um, but you know, perhaps that might be a, another reason or another touch point as to why he, he's no longer part of uh, Samsung um, and wants to focus more on a consumer-focused device. Um, it remains to be seen. Veteran technical talent is always in high demand, and it's common for high-level engineers to move between big-name companies. We know that. But there's a love-hate relationship sort of between Samsung and Apple. Can you explain how closely the two companies are intertwined? Well, there's obviously, you know, the uh, the big headline uh, court cases going on, and that's one element of being intertwined uh, between the two companies, and that will continue. Um, but... Um, Apple itself uses quite a bit of Samsung's technology um, on its bleeding edge devices. So, um, you know, they're, they're dependent, they're partners, and at the same time, adversaries. Chip design seems to be pretty important to both companies right now. Who do you think is ahead in chip, de in chip design, uh, Samsung or Apple, or are they pretty evenly matched? Uh, well, I would say... You know, that's a difficult question because um, famously Apple has very tight controls on its requirements and designs. Um, so, you know, while Samsung is the deliverer of those um, advanced um, systems and, and chips and architecture that make those things possible, um, Apple has got the blueprints um, and and pretty much the uh, list of demands that they, they require to make their um, their systems work the way that they do. So um, I think as far as being ahead, Samsung is clearly established, has been doing this, um, and is currently delivering on that. Um, so I would say Samsung at this point has got the leg up in, in those regards. Along with Apple rolling out its new iOS 6 software in September, an enhancement came with the new mobile operating system that many users are unaware of. The company has started tracking users through a new technology called IFA or IDFA, which is used so that advertisers can target them. Can you explain to us how the technology works? Yeah, uh, basically um, it's a, a number that's assigned to the different iOS devices. Um, and it's a random, um, um, supposedly anonymous number um, that is attached to um, a user and their device. So previously um, they had a different uh, scheme called a UDID, which... Um, was um, permanent, it was also non-deletable, it was more like a serial number. So, um, and it's basically a tracking, uh, a tracking um, token, essentially, that um, identifies uh, behavior that's going on. Um, and previously, uh, as far as the UDID was concerned, there was a big scandal around the fact that a lot of this information was being collected and a lot of people didn't know about it. So how does this information benefit advertisers? Well, what it does is it uh, gives um, advertisers the ability to track um, users um, from the initial presentation of an advertisement um, all the way until the point at which they actually buy in. Um, the most typical example would be uh, the buying of an application. So um, basically, they can now start to build some statistics around we showed so many advertisements or we showed this group of advertisers or group of uh, users this advertisement and we had this many conversions. You talked about Apple's UDIDs and that they had used them previously. It was understood that they had been disabled. So why roll out a new type of tracking device now? Well, they were technically uh, not so much disabled as they were basically, Apple was basically not approving um, any applications that track the UDID. UDIDs are still an element of the phones themselves. Um, so with this new um, uh, scheme or this new uh, technology, IDFA, um, it, what it does is it basically allows, um, you know, it, it, it gives those benefits to that, that ad, those advertisers, um, but it, it gives, um, you know, kind of a, 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 a demographic, if you will, um, that that uh, advertisers can use, so it's it's kind of part of their overall plan to to uh, you know create the ecosystem that they want. They basically require it. 
Does the user have a choice here? Can they switch it off if they want to? Yeah, they can. Uh, and reportedly, it's a little bit tricky to disable. Um, this was uh, definitely a, a change from the UDID scheme. Um, so um, it's uh, something new uh, that they're able to do, and, and you can choose to do it and look that up online. Um, a lot of people that are concerned with privacy may want to take a look at that, uh, turn those kind of things off. Um, and let me just be clear that there is no um, personal individual information um, that is disclosed with this uh, IDFA um, thing. Uh, so basically what it does is it provides just general numbers um, about a, a an audience altogether. So, Apple doesn't even mention IFA on its iOS 6 launch page. Why do you think they're keeping this such a secret from users? Well, um, you know, obviously there was uh, the uh, bad press um, and the privacy concerns. They, they don't want people to be um, alerted about that. And, and it may be a, um, a genuine uh, move towards, towards respecting um, privacy quite a bit more, having a, a stronger policy in place and the fact that you can opt out, whereas you couldn't before it was all in the hands of the advertisers and the application um, developers and things like that. So, Well, John, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate you joining us. Absolutely. For all the latest in-depth coverage and breaking analysis on tech innovation, keep up to date with News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV.